What is a garden? Well, a garden is a small piece of ground used for growing vegetables, fruits, flowers, herbs. I think we can expand that to any kind of containers. I mean, you got aquaponics, which has no ground at all, but they're still gardens, and they're used for exactly the same thing. I've been asked what a no-till garden is. Well, it's your piece of ground where you're not tilling. And there are tons of different kinds of gardens, and you can be successful in a lot of them. Now, I used to till, I used to plow, I used to hoe weeds, but what I found is if you use some deep mulch, it helps protect that soil. And whatever the life is going on in that soil, if I was a real scientist, I'd be able to tell you, but it seems to be helping the plants. And I think it kind of comes down to the different kinds of methods in a garden, because you can have a deep mulch garden and still use square foot method. And that's where you divide it off into little square foot sections. And depending on what you're planting, you space it out that way. Or you use that piece of ground for a chaos garden. And that you just scatter seeds. Now one of my mentors, Rue Stout, she looked at nature. So I've looked at nature. And yeah, seeds just fall on the ground and they grow. So there's really no need to plant them very deep. Although there's a few crops that if you do plant them a little deeper, they do a little better. Corn has a very shallow root system. So if you plant those just a little deeper, they'll stand the wind a little better. But they'll still germinate and grow if you just put them on top. Now carrots you can put on top, but they need water to germinate. So protecting them with a board or some cardboard, that makes a lot of sense. Radishes, you just put those out and they grow. No matter how you want a garden, whether you're going to be in the ground, in a container, in a raised bed, one thing you need to know is your first and your last frost dates. Those two dates will dictate a lot of what you do. I like to plant all year long, but having those dates, that tells me when I need to actually add more protection. One of the key things about the deep mulch is when it's really, really hot outside, it moderates that soil temperature helps those roots but then also as it cools off it keeps that soil temperature warmer so you can actually grow longer in the deep mulch now if you want to get into your frost you also want to look at what kind of crops take that frost really well and there's a lot of fruits and vegetables that'll go down quite a little bit well I really did need to come out here and do this right now because it's going to be 108 degrees heat index tomorrow that rain finally did get here Oklahoma City got well over six inches of rain the last couple days. It just kept missing me. But last night it come a pouring. And tomorrow is going to be a little sauna. That's also something you want to keep in mind is your water source. So it doesn't matter if you're in a container or a piece of ground or raised bed. If you got to tote water, you're not going to want to do it. You want to have your water set up pretty close to where you're gardening. And one thing that's key for me is growing what you like to eat. We could grow a lot of things, but if you don't like to eat them, what's the point? So then how do you know if you're successful in the garden? Well, depending on what your goal is. If your goal is just to supplement your dinner with some good tasting vegetables, it's pretty easy to be successful. If your goal is to feed your family all year round, you're going to need more than just a little patch of ground. So now you've been gardening for a little while. You've had some success. You've been eating out of the garden. You've been sharing with friends and neighbors. What's the next step? You need to have some kind of scheme to preserve. Whether you're going to freeze some, whether you're going to can some. And I'm not talking about tons and tons. You don't have to have a big pantry. But when it comes Christmas time, it's real nice to have some beans or peas or corn. And I grew up with Depression era grandparents. And at some point in their younger years, they had to eat out of the garden. But when I came along, they were just doing it because it tasted great. And they instilled that into me. And the reason we do this is because it tastes so much better 
when it's fresh and you know exactly what's been on it and it's always good to know how to tend the land so that it will grow things I was also asked the other day about how I grow things thing is I don't grow anything I just make the environment that the seeds will grow I try to make sure that the ground is in good shape that they have enough water that they're placed out where they have enough Sun you get all of those things right chances are you're gonna be able to eat out of your garden now just because the definition of the garden says a piece of ground to grow things you can do this in a small container a raised bed on your patio on your windowsill you get a couple successes you're gonna to want to expand and then you're gonna be out of control like me the hardest work I ever do is harvest now that I broke a sweat got a nice little batch of beans I'm going to head up to the house and get a little dinner. You can do this too. And until next time, remember, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.